yes, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Hello, Professor Mark Enrije. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Hi, nice I'm to fine. see you. you it's good to see all of you. Yes. I'm also very, very happy to see you. Uh, so let's wait a few minutes. Just our viewers can join us. Like, yeah. It takes some time. <laughs> and of course, I want to mention that Ainura Chokmarova is with us here. We're very lucky to have her participating in the presentation as well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Professor, uh, also for you to um, give this opportunity to be with you uh, in presenting this. And uh, thank you for all your doings and support. Uh, thank you, Aida. Uh, so it's my second time to be in front of the public. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Enrique, Professor Mark, for joining us today. So, yes, uh, already our viewers joined us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, dear friends, teachers, educators. Welcome to our English Language Teachers Corner session. Uh, it's my great pleasure to, to introduce our guest speakers today, uh, Professor Mark Dor and Ainura Chokmorova. So Professor Mark uh, has over 30 years of various experiences. And he has visited Kyrgyzstan to work uh, as an English language specialist and his current focus in um, teaching English in STEM. So um, two of uh, Professor Mark's book, uh, books on teaching English have been very popular and sold for years in different countries. And uh, during the lockdown, uh, Professor Mark uh, launched his own YouTube channel, uh, Mark Door Education, where he provides a teacher training videos for educators. And uh, our next uh, speaker, uh, Ainura Chokmorova. She is a teacher uh, program alumna supported by the U.S. Embassy Bishkek, and she is a head of foreign languages department at the Kyrgyz State Technical University. So today they will be talking about activities for English uh, for STEM. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mark Ainura J. again for accepting the invitation and being our guest speakers today. So I think uh, we can start, and the floor is yours, Professor. <laughs> Thank you very much, Aida. Yeah. You put in so much hard work there. You're providing a lot for people through all the things you're sending out through the library. Thank you for the center there. And thank you to, not, to Ainura again, because I know she's very busy with her work at the university, and she took out time uh -huh. to help with this. So. It's, it's really great. I'd also like to thank all of our participants because I know mm -hmm. things must be very difficult. I hear from many, many teachers around the world about how challenging it is right now to try to teach online, especially if they haven't been before. And at the same time, stay at home. At the same time, have all those other things going on. So good for you. I remember my time in Kyrgyzstan very fondly. It was wonderful to teach there. It was one of my favorite places. And uh, I wish I could be there now. Unfortunately, that this is how we do it, right? So, <laughs> so today, yeah. I want to set the stage. Today, we are not talking about theory. We are not talking about lesson planning. Those are very important. Please understand how you fit activities in to make it make sense are very important points. But today, it's just about giving you things to put in your teacher bag so that tomorrow or next week or next month, you will have opportunities, uh, things you can pull on, whether they're at the last minute or whether you plan on them. So let's just jump right in. We're going to try to give you as many activities as we can. Uh, and some of them may be a little geared more toward uh, young learners and some toward older learners, but we're going to have a variety of things that can be used for, for a lot of different learners. So it should be something for everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, remember that uh, there's a tendency with STEM, because STEM is about very serious things, science, technology, engineering, and math. There is a tendency to teach them very seriously. But remember, you can have a lot of fun with it, too, especially because we're teaching, in this case, we're teaching language for STEM. Mm -hmm. And so anytime that you can, if, can 
find something that interests the student, it's always going to be better learning. It just makes sense. If there's something you're interested in, you're going to pay more attention. So, for example, let's say uh, fables. Uh, uh, like in, in the case of English fables, Goldilocks. Uh, well, Goldilocks, in case you don't know the story, she goes to a house where there are three bears live and she sleeps in different beds and tries to find one that's comfortable. Maybe uh, a, a possibility would be you design her a better bed so that she sleeps better. Has fun with that. I think um, in your area you have a, a fable of Aldar Kose. Am I saying that correctly? Aldar yeah. Kose or Kose? Kose? Oh, yeah. Uh, and and that magic cloak. Well, maybe you redesign the magic cloak and you talk about that, or maybe you you do use some technology to make it act like magic. Things like this. Yes. Um, so um, things those things take no preparation at all. Really, speculate on technology. Students very often like movies. Let's say they watch S Star Wars, and and you hear the sounds going on in the movie. Well, there is no sound in space. It's a vacuum. Space doesn't have the air to transfer the sound waves. So you can talk about that. You can have students speculate, well, how can they have sound there? Because there is no, no air to transfer the, the sound waves, yes? Uh, and you can chat about that. And, and you have to get used to sort of open-ended, if you know what I mean by that. Open-ended teaching can can work very well, especially because it relates to STEM. By that I mean, for example, opening up a discussion about um, how could there be a sound in, mm -hmm. in outer space does not necessarily have a clean ending, but you, you go exploring, you go looking around. One of the things that I find that's very challenging for English teachers in STEM is the idea that, that some of their work has to be open-ended because science is open-ended. We don't know all the answers. And sometimes we go wandering down one way and we go, oop, that didn't work. And we go another way, that, oh, oh, that worked. And so they have to get used to open-ended and collaborative work because in science, technology, engineering, and math, collaboration yeah. is very important. Yeah, did you want to add anything to that, <laughs> Inura? Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, it's really great um, activity for, and uh, as it is called, easy and fun activities for teaching English for STEM. And within this, I'd like to add that uh, it developed these four C skills of students, and it's great opportunity to develop for so English in STEM. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Great. Um, another simple thing you can do, uh, as we have on our list here, is you can play a guard card game. And again, all of these things can be done online. If you're playing a card game, you just show the card like this. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the teacher has the cards and pulls them up. They, they tell him which him or her, which ones to use. Uh, and they pull off a board behind them. Um, uh, but you play a card game where there's a definition on it and you explain what it is without saying the word. So for example, let's say uh, you pull or maybe the teacher sends you through a, a message, which, mm -hmm. which card you got, uh, send you, you um, hold on just a second, minor problem with my screen. Well, that's all right, I'll take care of it. Um, the, the teacher sends you, and the, the word or term is the water cycle. You need the other students to guess what's the water, what is it? It's the water cycle. Uh, you might say, well, it involves transpiration, evaporation, condensation, things move around, it's about wet. Oh, it's the water cycle. Ah, got it. Yeah. So you can use little games like that that don't take very long to, to do to help uh, increase their interest in things. Now, Inura, would you like to take the next one? Yeah, thank you, Professor. Uh, so, and uh, thank you for your presentation also. And the next one is about uh, geo shapes. Uh, also, it is famous as a uh, geometric figures. Uh, so, uh, what activities students can have? For example, uh, so as you see, 
we have uh, this uh, geoshapes uh, regional form. And uh, for, uh, for example, if, if it is uh, ordinary classes, so uh, you can have an um, interactive, um, so interaction with your students. For example, uh, they can work in pairs, and for example, they can take a seat so back to back and uh, try to draw a, a, on a piece of paper on these figures. For example, one of uh, students can say, say uh, can you draw uh, in the right uh, corner, for example, circle, or maybe a triangle and something like that. Or maybe the, you can change uh, uh, this game, for example, uh, one student uh, take uh, sitting back to another one, and these students uh, try to draw on their back, of course, on the piece of paper, uh, these figures, and uh, the person try, uh, trying to find, to guess what figures are there. And of course, uh, then after uh, students have finished drawing, uh, they compare their answers. And it's really fun activity and enjoyable. And uh, within this, uh, students can, uh, of course, develop uh, their um, attentiveness, of course, and be more attentive and uh, make this opportunity. Uh, and, for, and the next one is, uh, for example, I try to, uh, there in our presentation, we try to make some of uh, our uh, activities, what uh, teachers can have at their classes. Uh, also, it can be uh, online lessons or maybe uh, ordinary lessons. So, uh, hope that everything is uh, visible. What, what about this, Aida? Have you seen this on the screen? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's the next presentation, uh, the next slide. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I see you. I mean, you uh -huh. oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so uh, students they uh, by these activities they can have, for example, uh, some activities as unscramble the words and translate them. Uh, within this, uh, students try to uh, find um, uh, the figures, of course, try to memorize them, uh, and of course they learn how it is uh, uh, write it, how they can write it and. Uh, Try to translate. So, and to uh, get this um, so uh, more effective, they can use uh, the next uh, exercise, so uh, the next task is uh, using these words, words and name the shapes. It's also interesting. Uh, sometimes students uh, um, try to say, uh, trying uh, to say, uh, for example, circle, they try oval or something by like this. So, it's also interesting and uh, uh, fun activity and the third one for example uh, this third, uh, uh, task you can use uh, on the online lessons also so uh, guess the words by their definition for example what's uh, a geometric figure uh, which has uh, three so uh, sides and three angles of course it's triangle so students can students uh, can uh, of course draw it and uh, write uh, this shape uh, the next one uh, so uh, it's also good so for students to know uh, what uh, so in detail what is this uh, geometric shape. For example, square. So it has four equal sides, four right angles, and in the sum of the inside angles, it equals uh, 360 degrees. So it's also good. And so with this activity, uh, they try to uh, get these figures, these shapes. And so uh, then, uh, within this, uh, we can come to the next uh, to the next slide. <clears throat> yeah, please, next slide. Uh huh. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah. Aida, the next slide. Yes, you can see the next slide. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is. Uh, I like this activity also. Uh, because our, in our, for example, in our universities, uh, so uh, students are of technical majors, and um, as you understand, they like uh, to make some projects, some to build something, to make some uh, some uh, such kinds of things. And um, within this, they can be more engaged in uh, learning English for STEM. Uh, for example, and then, and, uh, so uh, first one, uh, they can find 2D shapes, so 
uh, they will have a meat and they can try to find it by uh, so uh, so by circling this one uh, the next slide uh, it's so the next step, uh, activity it is called uh, built uh, geometric shape so uh, try to make this activity with your students and you can see that how it can be interesting and effective for them so uh, they will have a task for example use uh, five triangles um, one uh, hexagon and uh, one uh, rhombus and one trapezoid and they need to build this uh, triangle uh, so it's an example what uh, how it will be like so and but students they can uh, make it uh, in pairs or maybe in teams and it's really interesting and engaging activity also with this uh, they develop their policy skills uh, they can collaborate so they can communicate they can develop critical and creative thinking abilities also uh, and the next one uh, is something uh, as uh, previous but it's uh, really interesting for as a for university students and also for uh, stu uh, students of uh, school secondary schools why uh, because uh, they can um, Built, so uh, they can build, create uh, animals. It is called tangram animals so with these uh, shapes. And if you can see, so there are a lot of uh, animals, and but you can make more than this. Uh, and so after they have finished it, they can do uh, so they can compare uh, their shape, uh, their animals, and uh, tell about how many figures they have in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and mm -hmm. the next one I like most of all, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, so uh, it is about uh, uh, so what uh, STEM projects our students can make. Uh, uh, thank you so much for professor. So uh, when uh, it was we have this training um, uh, in 2018, it was really uh, so interesting for our teachers and then we can uh, use it in our teaching. Uh, so uh, students can uh, have an opportunity uh, to make uh, some projects and uh, to make projects. So it's uh, why it's so interesting for students because uh, first they uh, try to work in pair, uh, not in teams. So teamwork. So it's collaboration. Of course, it's communication. Of course, it's critical and creative thinking abilities, and they. Uh, and also at the end of it, they can, they need to uh, present their own idea. Uh, so uh, in this activity, students can use as a problem-based uh, so uh, project or maybe problem-based uh, uh, so project-based uh, um, teaching also. So um, and there are, uh, for example, there I have uh, we have shown uh, sorry we have shown some of the projects they can have. And for example, uh, the next one, so, and they can uh, also, every teacher can um, develop and um, make some own uh, contribution in it, so, uh, and make more difficult, or so maybe some uh, situations to, uh, to solve them. And the next one, so, as you see, uh, there are a lot of, um, uh, as, uh, uh, it is called built a uh, shape. So and uh, so the students will have uh, uh, this task. At the task, they uh, have uh, what they need to build and how many of uh, uh, figures, uh, two speaks, uh, and uh, them they can use in this uh, activity. And also uh, in this activity, so uh, uh, teacher can give them, for example, time to make it. And they can share, with, uh, so compare with their uh, figures, with, with their shapes with another partner. So, and uh, the next one is, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, such kinds of activities and uh, uh, it's good for students, uh, uh, this activity is good for students, why? Because uh, they are, for example, uh, after they have this figure and uh, they need to, uh, find how many, for example, triangles it has, or maybe how many uh, squares it has. And uh, so, um, uh, teacher can give students time, for example, to find, uh, uh, it is an example, for example, uh, to find um, 
30 um, triangles uh, in five minutes and try to show where they are hidden. It's a really good opportunity then for them. Uh, and so within this, I also would like to add that uh, uh, when uh, we, we are preparing um, these uh, fun activities, of course, uh, uh, it was big help, great help from professor. And also there are a lot of resources at the American State Golf, so where you can find um, a lot of resources as for teachers, as for students, and especially if you are so, uh, if you need uh, to find some STEM activities for, uh, so English for STEM activities, you can find uh, uh, everything uh, here. So you can uh, find, um, for example, these presentations. Also, you can find some worksheets uh, and uh, you know, it's really so good opportunity to all, for all teachers to have these uh, resources. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Do you have something to add? Well, uh, excellent presentation of the material, Ainura. Thank you. I really like, in fact, I think I'm going to add uh, to my uh, activities that uh, piece with the animals because that would be a great way to lead into geoshapes if you have two students working together to try to figure out how to make the animal uh, yeah over there on the right side of the screen um, that would if you prep them with how to learn the shapes and then they go to that problem solving that collaboration which yeah. is so wonderful in the language of that and then going to the geoshapes i think that's a wonderful thing thank you i think i'd just uh, like to elaborate just a little bit on the idea of the geoshape activity uh, you were very good to to bring that up, and it's it's one that's been used uh, around the world. And the reasoning behind it is because sometimes we forget that the use of language, the purpose of language, is to communicate. I know it sounds simple, but we forget that we get locked into prepositional phrases and all these other things and 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 we some it's sometimes good to remember that the whole point is for me to get my ideas into your head and you to get your ideas into my head and mm -hmm. by by talking to each other to try to make the the pictures exactly the same you're you're working through the communication and and what you talked about that was really good because the teachers need to remember that there's no somebody didn't do it correctly and somebody didn't do it incorrectly. They both communicated. So if it fell apart, then they work on their communication. They don't say somebody did something wrong. And and that's so important in our language. So I think you did a wonderful job on that section. Thank you, Inora. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And Aida, I have a quick question for you. You're our tech person. Uh, I know that there are certain things like in Google and others where students can can move out from the group and work just say two or five together. Where would students go if, if teachers needed students to break out and do some things that they could check on? Do you have suggestions where they would go? Oh, no idea. What do you mean by gathering? You mean uh, any online tools? Well, yeah, I, I can't think of them right now, but I know that there are tools that teachers use where you're all together in one group online, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the teacher breaks people off into other groups, say a group of two, group of two, group of two, group of two. Oh, it's, uh, I think it's Google Classroom. Classroom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Google that was it. I couldn't think of the one. So that would be very good to remember for what Ainura was talking about and these other things we're talking about as well. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. I wish we could hear more of Ainura. Okay. She did a very good job. Um, I don't know if, if you have the memory game there. We call it the memory game, where you have a set of special cards and it's, it's pairs that look the same. As mm -hmm. So uh, they come in many different kinds. But for example, uh, it might be a goat and a goat and a pig and a pig or things like that and then you put them down or you put them up behind you and you have to remember oh when I turned over this one that was the goat and I think this one's the goat too and if you get the two goats you take them off and like that but instead you can do it with 
STEM topics, STEM, especially STEM terminology, or even beyond terminology, using their minds to put things together. For example, what we have here in our presentation. You could have two cards, one that says water, they find, mm -hmm. and then the other one says H2O. Ah, those match. Or you could have H2 and O. Uh, so you can not just get the terminology, but keep their minds working about what that's about um, for a, a memory game. Um, Pictionary, that's fairly simple. You know, you, you see a term and you draw things until somebody guesses it. There's not much to that. Um, but what can be very funny sometimes, and you, could, I've, you can do this online, is to mime uh, something until someone guesses it. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you've probably seen this at a party where somebody gets a word and then they can't use any words. They have to move until people guess what it is they are. But it gets even more interesting in STEM <laughs> when you see people trying to become different things in science and technology, and people are trying to guess as much as they can. <laughs> um, now, this one, this next one is used, used widely, the paper airplanes. And you can do this online, um, creating folding paper airplanes. Yes, the folding part and just throwing it that's simple, but turn it into the, the, the values of science and the values of technology and, and engineering and language that's involved there. So, for example, I have made this like this, so I predict it will mm -hmm. fly very far or it will make circles or other things. Um, and then uh, you can have them test it. Everybody at home can test it themselves, and then they measure how far it flew or how many times it circled or whatever it did, and then they report. Now, predicting, measuring, mm -hmm. and reporting are basics in STEM, whether you're in engineering, science, whatever. I predict this will happen. I hypothesize that this will happen. Just a quick review the difference between hypothesis and theory. Hypothesis mm -hmm. is an educated guess. Not just a guess, eh, I think this will happen, but like, I see this, I see this, I think this will happen. It's an educated guess. A theory is a much bigger idea. And sometimes people use the word theory incorrectly. A theory is you take many hypotheses usually and you do a lot of work and it takes a lot of thought in there. So they would hypothesize what happens. I see we've moved on to Rube Goldberg there. Uh, there's a little American culture involved. He was an American and artist, uh, and he made these crazy machines uh, that uh, in, the, in the U.S., it's becoming an older term now, but um, used to be able to say that that was a, if you saw some strange looking machine, you would say, oh, that's a Rube Goldberg contraption. It's, it's very odd. Um, if you haven't seen these before, let me describe it. As you can see, it works through a process and it has it, it little letters that take you A, B, C. To, so what happens first, second, third, fourth, fifth, throughout all this? Um, I wonder, can we go to that markdoor.com link and take a look at what I have there? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Professor, uh, can I uh, add something? Please. This, uh, thank you. It's really a um, great um, presentation. Thank you. And about this Rube, uh, Rube uh, Goldberg, I'd like to add that um, if you will use this activity with your students, especially when they need to describe a process, so uh, you can see that how it can be enjoyable for your students. And uh, do you know that uh, you can, uh, every teacher can, so uh, to put some in other activities on this one. one. So first uh, they, uh, yeah, they need to describe the process. So yeah, of course they will work in teams. And the second one, uh, they can uh, so try to develop uh, something as this one and so what uh, technology they can use in it and uh, when students um, have opportunity to make a project so uh, 
you can find that how creative can be your students and how your lesson uh, can be enjoyable for your students and of course effective. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Ainura. Yes, while we're waiting on that, yeah, let's go right on into it. The point of this, exactly, just as Ainura said, is the idea of describing a process. Just like I said, that whole predicting, testing, and reporting is critical to STEM. A part of that is describing a process. Now, perhaps you are describing the process of the experiment you have done. Or perhaps you're describing the process of uh, instructions to run a machine uh, or, or any other process. There is language involved in that. And if we can't get to that, that's all right. Um, but uh, the, the point is you can have a little fun with it because these, these designs, they're, they're kind of silly, obviously. This is not a very serious <laughs> Uh, uh, way. And if you could see the animation on this, you can go to markdoor.com in the presentations area and you'll find this. Um, you'll see that the whole point of this is to run a little napkin that wipes off his face after he eats a uh, little soup. Uh, so it's they're ridiculous machines. But uh, if you go to that, you'll also see the, the language of process that's involved and how students can use that. Now, even better, as I think Ainura might have pointed out there, you can have uh, students make their own, and you can go online, you can Google this, and you'll see many, many examples. But students don't need special equipment. You see many examples of students who've taken a ruler and a book and a golf ball and some glasses and all these things, and they've made these crazy contraptions that go from here to here to here to here to here. And if you want to include language in it, then they might have a report that describes that process of how that works or what it does or what occurs. Um, <clears throat> so something very useful. I understand it looks like we can't get it now, so that's okay. But if you want to see it and, and many other presentations I have on my website, it's just markdoor.com. And if you go to presentations, you'll find a variety of presentations including this Rube Goldberg. Did you want to add anything else, Anura? Uh No, thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. All right, let's um, move on then. Hmm. Next one. All right. Here is another open-ended kind of an activity that sometimes English teachers have, have to get used to a little bit. But you can, if, if they've worked up to the point where they have the vocabulary, they have the knowledge of the language. Um, it's very good for university students, but it can be even done with uh, elementary students, primary students, if they have the preparation. It's just done on a simpler manner. Um, this idea of what you could and could not make from a group of objects. Now you as the teacher online could have those objects presented here and they could break out into their Google Classroom groups and work on this and come back. Um, but it's, it's very interesting to do this activity, a could, could not activity, um, because mm -hmm. you put a variety of things up there and sometimes they will create things you never even thought of. Um, and, and so you, you have them explain them, well, how could you make that? Or how would you make that? Or, or why could you not make that? And you get that language involved and they're telling you, well, you see, we could because, or it could not happen because we don't have a motor and we would need a motor or, or things like that. Um, the other great thing about that activity, just like the Rube Goldberg activity, is that you could do it with anything you have around the house. People can make things from. Uh, so a could or could not, I know our time is getting shorter. We'll go to questions here soon, but I just want to get through a few more things. Um, in a similar way, uh, something that sometimes takes a little getting used to, but is create uh, is very creative activity is like what a monster might be like, or an alien, or a planet. So they're not worrying about if it's real. You know, sometimes they get worried that I, I have to talk about this is how really a car is. Mm -hmm. This is how really how people are. Forget that. This is pretend. This is a monster or something. So. Mm -hmm. You give them questions like, 
what would a monster look like if it could not touch the ground? Now, the important thing on all of these is, I believe, because I'm a very student-centered teacher, this is the most teacher talk I ever do online. Usually in my classes, I, I Nura can tell you, I have them working all the time. <laughs> but um, um, you want to have them do this in pairs or in groups to talk about it, to discuss it in English, of course. But, well, what does that mean? Maybe that means a monster has really long arms that can help it move through the trees so it doesn't touch <laughs> the ground. Or maybe it flies. Or maybe it has a head that blows up like a balloon and it floats. I don't know. Could be a variety of things, but it's very open-ended uh, thing. If an alien had a third arm, what would that mean? Well, maybe that would mean that you could write while you're eating. Or maybe that would mean uh, so many other things, all the possibilities. Those are silly things. And if you didn't understand the reason behind them, you would think, well, what good is that? But the same thing happens in STEM. We think, well, if this molecule worked this way, then what would happen to the peptide? Or if this, we do that kind of speculation. Uh, so it works like that. I see I only have a few minutes left. Let me just go to the next one. Um, uh, a very simple one, very often used one, is having students use table scraps to make a scrap garden. Scraps are the leftover bits of food. So maybe you would take some of the things we were talking about and have your students say, find scraps at your table, gather them over a couple of days or something, and uh, plant a little garden and record what's going on. This is especially better for younger students. Um, uh, but And you can predict, like, I think the potatoes will grow. Why do you think the potatoes grow? Well, because my grandmother grows potatoes like this. Okay, that's a good reason. I don't think the celery will grow. Why not celery? I've never seen celery grow like that, if just from pieces. <laughs> um, so they, they use that... Uh, as, a, as another way <clears throat> to learn the reporting, to learn the language, to learn the, <clears throat> the idea of observing and recording, which is so important. Another thing that we do with younger uh, students especially is uh, a moon chart. And even if they can't write in English, they will simply draw what the moon looks like that night. And then later you can talk about half moon, quarter moon, on like that. Um, some of you <clears throat> might have played with Minecraft, and there's a person at Colorado, at the University of Colorado here in my state, uh, who worked with somebody in Oregon, uh, and I, I can get you that, uh, that link there, um, where they created all kinds of wonderful STEM activities based on simple tasks, build a doorway, build a whatever it is. And students have done wonderfully with that. Minecraft is right there. It's available for people online. I, I believe it's still free, uh, the, the simple versions. Uh, and so they can work. Let's talk for a moment. And I really wanted to get this in. And I'm glad uh, I might go over our time before questions just by a few minutes here. But um, STEAM, now STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, sometimes programs take the time, it takes more time and more energy and more thought, but they do STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Arts can be painting, dance, uh, anything in the arts, music. Why would they do that? It creates a broader worldview. And there are those who say that the modern learner needs to have a broader worldview, be able to collaborate, be able to think outside the box. And STEAM will help promote that. But I have to tell you, it does take more effort. Now, an example that I put here. On the left, you'll see uh, Jackson Pollock is a famous artist from the United States. And that's one of his paintings. Very, it's always a lot of things going on. It looks like somebody sort of just threw the paint on. What you can do, if, if you have the time, for example, you could have students make a simple catapult. Now, on the right, you see an example of a catapult. That's just a, 
usually a rubber band and some sticks and it throws something just like that. <laughs> Um, some people have used gumballs for this. I don't know if you have gumballs there. They're a candy that kind of splat if you throw them. Well, <clears throat> if, you have, if you have the time and ability to have the students build these things and then throw paint, make sure to put some paper down or whatever because you're going to get paint on the floor <laughs> if you don't. <laughs> but um, uh, to throw paint or throw something like a gumball that's a candy that splats when it hits something, um, then they, they get so much from it because they learn about some about American culture, Jackson Pollock. They learn about that kind of art, that particular style of art where it looks splashy. Um, he didn't do it with a catapult, but we're, we're uh, mixing that to make STEM. You learn about that construction or that engineering and often you'll work together to try to make that so you have a, a cooperative effort on that 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 uh, energy causes motion right you have you have potential energy from the rubber band that's released and and causes motion so there's science involved there you have the technology, you're testing and refining a prototype. Usually when students build it, the first time it doesn't work, maybe the fifth time or tenth time it doesn't work. They have to fix it and refine it. And that's very much a technology concept. Usually when you build something, the first time it doesn't work the way you want it to. Uh, we talked about the engineering and the math, measuring, calculating. Maybe, maybe you measure how far you can throw it. Maybe you measure how big the splat is. Maybe you measure the energy that comes from the catapult. I throw this in just to kind of broaden the discussion because sometimes it can get involved strictly in STEM, strictly in science or, or mathematics. And bringing in, if you can bring in a little art and show using music, to show mathematics. There's lots of mathematics in music. Anybody who's learned to read music knows there's mathematics involved. Um, the, the physics of sound, the, the, um, the biology involved in dance. There's, if you have the time, it truly broadens the scope of it all. But I do have to say it is, it is a little work <laughs> on there. So. Uh, I know I've gone a little bit into our time for questions. Uh, I guess we'll just get to the last there. But um, it, before we go to questions, I just want to give uh, Ainur the floor one more time to have a chance to say anything else she might have. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor. And also uh, one of our suggestions, uh, as you see in the last slide, it's really um, great uh, you can see that uh, what uh, students or what teachers uh, uh, what objectives learning objective they have for learning uh, this activity for giving this activity and uh, it, ca it can help you for example to uh, develop your lesson for example uh, as science how can it be measurable for example as technology engineering and math and at the end you can also uh, to put uh, english so what learning objective students will have and uh, so for today especially uh, when we have this uh, center of technology where students know a lot of about techniques and uh, uh, in other uh, tools so uh, so it's um, task based learning or one of the task based learning so when they have opportunity to be involved because they know this situation and they can go on, on the, with this situation. So, and uh, thank you, Professor, for your wonderful uh, ideas. It's really fun and enjoyable for our students. Thank you for your presentation. Oops. Thank you, Ainura. Your presentation made it all much more understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, Professor Mark Ainura Jir, for incredible presentation and for uh, wonderful ideas, strategies that you shared with us. So um, I think now uh, I will ask uh, our friends, teachers, uh, please, uh, if you have any question, you can type them under, I mean, in the comment section. And now uh, Professor Mark and Andrew will answer them. So thank, thank you very you. much, everyone.
thank you. Oh, we can see uh, Professor Mark's YouTube channel. So please subscribe to Mark Tor Education uh, YouTube channel and visit MarkTor.com uh, website in order to learn more about uh, teaching English in STEM. So Thank you. Yes, if you go to that, and uh, you, there are many different things to see there, mm -hmm. but on markdoor.com, presentations will show you different presentations, including those I had in Kyrgyzstan, mm -hmm. uh, many of those. And, and then the YouTube or the Facebook, uh, they're on either one, mm -hmm. Markdoor Education. Uh, those come up every once in a while, and they cover more things than STEM. I've only, I, I haven't covered much STEM yet, but uh, they, they cover a variety of things. Mm -hmm. Great. It's cool, Professor Mark. So, Enrije, I think uh, we can stop sharing the screen in order to mm -hmm. see our okay. faces. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, yes, uh, please, uh, dear friends, ask your questions. So, uh, the first question uh, for you, uh, why STEM is important? Is that for me? Yeah. Um, well, it's it's just part of the part of the progress toward the future. It, it doesn't mean other things aren't important. Mm -hmm. We are focusing on STEM right now because uh, government, business, <laughs> and uh, societies just look at what we're doing right now. Not many years ago, we couldn't be having this conversation or this wonderful webinar without so much STEM, without mm -hmm. the technology that went into these computers and the internet and the power that, that makes it work and the energy resources, and all of this. All of this is thanks to STEM. The uh, SpaceX rocket just went up. Doesn't happen without STEM. The International Space Station doesn't happen without STEM. The uh, technology and chemistry mm -hmm. and biology involved in people trying to find an answer for the COVID-19 virus mm -hmm. is about STEM. Uh, so that's why there's so much focus on STEM. Believe me, it doesn't mean there aren't more important, there aren't other important things, but that's why STEM, it, I believe, is so important. That would be my opinion. Do you, do you agree, Anwar? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Professor. And also, I want to add that uh, today, STEM, STEM is everywhere. So, and especially, especially for today, uh, when we faced with the problem of COVID-19, and so we have online lessons where uh, we use uh, more uh, tools in our teaching. So, and we, uh, we can find that STEM is important, important for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Professor Mark Henrije. So, uh, the next question. Uh, do you have uh, plans to come back to Kyrgyzstan, Professor Dor? <laughs> I would love to. I very much enjoyed being there. Currently, I don't see it happening. Travel is not advised right now. Uh, but I think it would be fantastic. I thought that uh, Ainura, I thought that Aida, I thought that Natalia, the, the, the uh, America, okay. everybody there, Aijiram, everybody um, was so wonderful. I enjoyed the country I joined. Uh, Bishkek and Osh, both places. Um, it really, uh, you have a, a very intriguing culture there. And in fact, I'm still using, right over here, I have some slippers that I got from there, as well as <laughs> one of my daughters, one of my daughters and I play chess all the time on a board that I got from Ainuro's university. <laughs> yeah, from our team. <laughs> <laughs> we, will wait. You. we will definitely wait. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. Professor. So, uh, the next question, uh, what is the STEM knowledge level in Central Asian countries? Well, that's a little bit difficult to calculate. Uh, it depends on if you go by how many people have graduated with the degrees, what levels they got on assessments, what assessments those were, because some assessments aren't particularly valid or reliable. Uh, I don't know that I can give you an honest answer to that. Uh, my best answer would be, like in every country, you have people who are very good at it and you have people who aren't as good at it. 
I, I couldn't compare it to other countries because I, I don't know a valid way to say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very Ira? much. Mm -hmm. Professor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your answer. I, I totally agree with you. And uh, within this, I want to add that uh, today, uh, so we have together as STEM and as English, for, I mean, that's for English language teachers, if uh, we make um, comparing. So, uh, because uh, as I mentioned before, it's really important for today. So it's nowadays. And uh, also today, uh, so telling about the level is not so easy for me also, but uh, I can say that uh, today more, uh, a lot of people are engaging in learning STEM. Uh, for example, STEM teachers are trying to learn English. So STEM English, or as English language teachers try to learn STEM. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, certainly I would, I, I would piggyback onto that. I would add to that that uh, yes, if you want to be involved in a science in, in, in STEM, uh, learning English, this is not just because English is my native language, it's just a fact that learning English will help you in your career. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Professor Henry here. So we can move to the next question. Um, how space topic can be incorporated into English in STEM teaching? such as the topic of space like outer space? Yes. Space. Ah, so many ways. <laughs> uh, well, we have space like dimension, we have space like, anyway, that's all right. So, um, um, so many ways, in fact, you could Google them, there are so many ways. And uh, one of the best ways I've seen uh, NASA, unless they took down the site, NASA, N-A-S-A, has mm -hmm. some wonderful resources. Uh, PBS, Public Broadcasting Service, PBS.com, has some wonderful resources. Are, are, those are two just of many, many, many resources. So the few things we're, we're talking about here don't even begin to touch. It's just, as we, as we say with an idiom here, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's just a little bit of a big uh, bunch of in, information. Um, but uh, it can include everything from, let's take some of the things we talked about today, predicting, testing, measuring, and reporting. Well, can you take the idea of uh, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction in physics? Well, maybe you, you push something into something else and something else rolls. That's mm -hmm. one way that actually ends up being the same principle as a rocket engine and you can connect that to a rocket engine. You mm -hmm. can, um, you can. I don't know if you know the idea of pump rockets, P-U-M-P rockets, mm -hmm. but you can have, look that up online. I don't have the visuals here, but um, you can create a pump rocket and have them stomp on this thing and the rocket flies up. Well, again, you can talk about it. You can use the, the language of process as I, Ainura was discussing. Um, you can um, take the idea of, um, what is it? There's click volunteering. A click volunteer, mm -hmm. I think they still have this program. I think it's still running in NASA. You can go to click volunteering and you can participate in outer space exploration because they need thousands of eyes looking through the many, many photographs they have. And mm -hmm. so they might have you counting how many craters are on an, a moon or looking for certain changes in a spectrum, you know, a, a spectrography uh, yeah, yeah. And, and looking for certain colors. They can actually actively participate in that. Those are just a few ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Professor, for sharing these great ideas. So uh, we can move to the next question. Uh, how to cultivate vocabulary through STEM activities? Sure. I come back to those several points I made earlier. Find things that are, that are fun. It's going to change with every class. I know it's, it did for me for the many years I was a classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. I would teach the same class, sometimes teach the same class different terms, and every term I had to change it a little bit. Because one year, or one term I had students who were interested in these, and next term it was in these. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I don't know why, but teachers push against this. And I think it's not exactly the best idea. 
because it's the easiest thing you can do to make your classes interesting and effective. All you have to do is learn a little bit about your students. Uh, that one likes movies. That one likes computers. That one likes horses. Uh, that one has a family who's living in Bishkek. I don't know, whatever. Uh, and then do as simple a thing as include their names in your quizzes. If you're, if you're making, or in your activities, if you're making little sentences, you know, like little closed sentences, like he blanked to the store, or he walked, you know, that kind of a thing. Well, instead say, uh, Ajiram walked to the store, right? It's amazing how if you just include their names in things, their attention goes up, their interest goes up. You do the same thing with vocabulary. I'm coming around. So you can put a lot of things up there well, if, if there are parts of STEM that they're particularly interested in, at least start with those. Get the interest up. Then you can get into the other parts of it. But work with the things they like. Use those card games. Use those guessing games. Use those collaborative games that will grow the vocabulary. Use the, the shapes activity that Inura talked about if they need basic things such as, as, as understanding what different shapes are. And then they, they grow from that and collaborate and work. Uh, those are a few suggestions. I know you probably have many more. Yeah, thank you. Great, uh, great point, Professor. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I totally agree with you that don't be afraid to make your lesson interesting and more effective. Uh, and of course, teachers know need to know their students what they need. And uh, so, and uh, uh, for example, telling about the projects for if you will take and make a project with your students. So, for example, you have one idea or uh, but your students, for example, in group, you will have 15 students. So they have 15 ideas. And so then you can develop one idea from one to 15. And so it will be more um, interesting. And uh, so and for students, it will be a great chance to be a leader of own projects and to make own projects so uh and so uh, when they will uh, fill this space that's uh, comfort space uh, where they can uh make their own projects so they know that your students uh, will love more as english and STEM together <laughs> okay Very good. thank you wonderful thank you very much for your answers professor mark and i know so uh, the next question for you, how to integrate STEM into other subjects? Yes, well, we already talked a little bit of how to integrate in, into the arts, uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's great to hear that you're thinking about integrating, because that means you're not just trying to do what you have to, you're thinking beyond, what can I add to this? Good for you, whoever that was. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's interesting. It becomes easier as you do it. When you first try it, it tends to be a little difficult. I'm just being honest. But as you get used to it, pretty soon your brain starts seeing connections to everything that you're doing. And just by practice and practice, whatever subject you're talking about, uh, any subject, history. Uh, look at what we did with the Rube Goldberg. That involved history and, and art cartoons, right? Who would have thought that would be? But it's very much STEM. You, you, I, my suggestion is just keep working at it. It may feel a little difficult at first, but as you keep doing it, you're, start, you're going to start to see connections between turning on the light in your room. Oh, yeah, the electricity, the circuitry, the, all that kind of thing. Okay, let's see. The dog outside, biology. Look what he's doing. What's he eating? That kind of a thing. You start making those connections connections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what uh, yeah and so uh, I think that uh, um, these subjects can be connected why because for example as professor said uh, uh, I, I like your idea of, for example as a history uh, geography so uh, <laughs> telling about these shapes students can find these <laughs> shapes for example uh, and uh, so nowhere in this, uh, for example, east, west, and uh, something this. And uh, I think that uh, it, it's, it can be easy involved in integrated in all subjects. Mm -hmm. yeah, just know at the very first, it might seem strange, but just give it a little time. 
Cool. Thank you very much, Professor Mark and Norege. Uh, so the next question, how to introduce STEM to very young learners? Oh, yes. Well, I think Anura already just showed us some, some ways there. Uh, you can have preschoolers doing some of the things that Anura was talking about, those shapes, and even putting those shapes together. I could even see preschoolers collaborating to put together the animals. Um, and there are, again, a variety of, of uh, resources online, and right now I can't think of any of them. I'm sorry. Um, online is such a wonderful resource. You know, it, it, what, what we can do in an hour online used to take us days if we could even do that uh, before. Uh, but remembering the developmental stages, I don't know if your, all of your teachers have learned such as Piaget's uh, stages of development in life. But mm -hmm. I, I think for all teachers, but especially for teachers of, of early age students, it's very important to understand what they're understanding and how they're understanding it. Uh, trying to think of the best answer to your question, because the biggest error that I've seen commonly is that teachers don't take that into account and then get very frustrated or even angry with their students that they're not understanding it. But the students understanding <laughs> level, they understand this and they're trying to teach this. And so mm -hmm. make sure to fit their developmental level. As long as you're at their level, you can teach all kinds of STEM. Look at the earthworm on the ground. There's biology involved there. There's movement, there's energy, there's mm -hmm. physics. There's even botany involved in, in what it's crawling through. Uh, look at the shapes. Again, Inura's work, things like that, be mm -hmm. great. Thank uh, you. Look at the, the physics of playing with a ball. Uh, they can get that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Professor Mark. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of qualities uh, background should have STEM teacher. I wonder if Ainura would like to answer this first, just in terms of the Kyrgyz uh, context. Mm -hmm. uh, so telling about, I uh, thank you, Professor, telling about the background or uh, level of uh, teaching STEM, I want to say that, uh, <laughs> so of course, uh, teachers need to know the STEM subject first, first of all. Uh, and uh, it's a variety of subjects and so uh, telling about um, uh, so and of course they need to understand for example if it's Kyrgyz in Kyrgyzstan so they need to know this Kyrgyzstan culture and history and traditions also and for example and the dependency for example in USA something this so because uh, we have well, maybe some uh, challenges in this one uh, and so and of course, knowing the STEM subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I, that's a mm -hmm. that's a great answer because you you have knowledge of that context there and what they're working with in their schools or in their universities. I might add to it something that I learned when I was in graduate school. Somebody once asked a professor of mine, said, "Would you hire an English teacher?" who was very good at grammar and the technical side of it, or would you hire a teacher who was much better at engaging the students? See, those are two different kinds of teachers. Mm -hmm. The pres professor said, I would hire them both. It's hard to say that, it's hard to say that just one kind of teacher is good for a job. Mm -hmm. I have never worked in an institution where all the teachers were the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I have directed an institution. I've been a director twice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like to think that sometimes I got it right because I think that sometimes the best thing to do is recognize that every teacher is different. Look for the strengths and then use those strengths for your institution. So mm -hmm. the teacher who's, who gets students enthusiastic, use that teacher especially for that. Not only, but especially. That teacher who's great about technical side, use that teacher especially for that. I would say it's hard to find any kind of institution where all the teachers are the same. 
Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor. I absolutely agree with you. Yes. So this was our last question. So thank you very much, Professor Mark. I know Rede for this wonderful informative session uh, and it's really, I mean, useful recommendations and uh, amazing ideas that you shared with us. Uh, uh, and thank you very much, uh, dear teachers, for your active participation, for your comments and questions. I think it's time to finish our session. And thank you very much for being with us. We were happy to have you, Professor Mark and Anurya J in this session. So thank you. Proud to be here. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the teachers involved. Great. Thank you. Thank you to all. And thank you, Professor, to you. Uh, it's really a great honor for me to be with you today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And My thank pleasure. you for all who can have opportunity to participate. Thank you. Well, bye, everyone. Have a great evening. Have a great day.